Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video I'll show you an advanced way of visualizing your music in Blender. We'll use Blender 2.9.3 and Animation Notes. I put a link to both downloads in the video description. The plan is to use a MIDI file instead of pure audio to drive the animation. Oh, and by the way, you can download the project file from my Gumroad for free. And with all that said, let's get started. First, we need some piano keys. Again, you'll find the full model on my Gumroad page, but these are actually quite easy to model. We can just download a reference image from Google and import it into Blender with Shift A, Image, Reference, and then select your reference image. We want to clear out its rotation with Alt and R, and now we can go into top view and using cubes in wireframe mode, we can just trace the individual keys. Now we can eyeball the Z scale to what feels right and use boolean modifiers on your keys with different cubes as cutters to cut out parts we do not need, just like this. Now it is also important to use bevels because keys aren't this perfectly sharp around the edge and you always want to make sure you have the scale applied and now you can turn down the amount and up the segments and also shade your model smooth. You can see that I used some more cutting right here on the edge to create this little detail. These keys right here are also just cubes that I placed on top of them and then scaled them down and scaled the bottom vertices right here so they fit correctly and then I was able to just extrude this cube downwards just like this and I had this shape right here. You then just need to complete one full octave with 12 keys and you're good to go. Once you've created your full octave, you can just go ahead and duplicate it until you get 128 keys. You can see that I needed to duplicate the octave 10 more times, but the last octave is just 8 keys long. Why we need 128 keys is something I'll explain later. Now what will make our job a lot easier is to rename all your keys from 1 to 128. You can see that I am displaying the names of every object right now. You can do this under viewport display name. And by the way, if you are in such a situation right here and you want to change a setting of all of your objects, you can select all of them, change the setting of the active object and then right click it and choose copy to select it. This way you can for example easily display all of the names of your objects. Now again, if you do not want to rename these objects manually, you can download this model from Gumroad. Okay, great. Now we need to get the MIDI file ready and apply the animations. Once understood, this process is actually pretty simple. I will create the MIDI file in Cubase, but you can do this in any DAW. Now let's create a MIDI track and write down some notes. And now you can also see that a MIDI file can store up to 128 notes and this is why we modeled our piano in Blender with only 128 keys. Great! So I'll just write some notes, just like this. And now I'll set the start and end point correctly and go to File, Export, MIDI File. Make sure that you only export one MIDI track because if this is not the case we might run into trouble later. Okay, great, the MIDI file is exported and now we can worry about animation notes and the actual animations. So let's open a new window in Blender and go to animation notes. Of course you'll need to install the add-on to get to this point. Let's create a new node tree and make sure auto execution is enabled. To read a MIDI file we need the according node. So let's press Ctrl and A to directly go into search mode and search for read MIDI file. And now under path, just select your MIDI file. Great! You can see that we have a list output and it puts out the different MIDI tracks. This list should just have one entry because we exported only one track. And pressing W and choosing viewer will show us that yes, the length is 1. All of the data in here is not really necessary for us to see, so let's delete the viewer node. Now we can select the node get list element. This will allow us to input a list and get the first index, which is index 0. If we again apply a viewer node with W, you can see that we get our only MIDI track as an output. 
We now want to evaluate this MIDI track, so we actually get the values for each individual note. For example, we played a G first, meaning that on the first few frames, the note G4 should have a value of 1. We can use this information to apply a certain rotation to the G4 key. So let's go ahead and search for evaluate MIDI track and input this note. Now let's change the mode to all because we want to get all the values for every single note and input our MIDI track. We don't need to change any other values. We only need to use the frame note as our time info. Now we should get a list of every single note from 0 to 127 that will show us if a note is played or not. The only thing that is left to do now is to loop through all of the objects and apply rotation when the note is played. Press W on the Evaluate MIDI track and choose Loop Through Node Values. This will automatically create a loop subprogram for us that we can use. You can see that inside our loop we have three values we can use. First one is the index, which if we view it is always at 127 because the loop is running so quickly, and the iterations, which is 128. We also have the according node output, so let's rename this value to active key. Basically what we do is we check the index, which is between 0 and 127, and then check if the key is active. If so, we want to apply rotation. Ok, great. To get the according object, let's search for the node object by name, and now we want to use the index as the object name. Again, we can do this because we renamed the objects to 1, 2, 3 and so forth. To use the index value as a name, we can use the convert to text node and input the index as data. Now plug the text into the object by name node. But there is one problem we have and this is that I started at 1 when renaming the keys, but the index starts at 0, so what we need to do is add in a float math node and add 1. Now we cannot just use float as our data input because this will add a decimal point. We need to use the float to integer node between both of those. Now this should work fine. To apply the rotation we need to use the object transforms output node. This takes an object as an input and now allows us to apply rotation. We only need rotation on the x-axis, so let's do this right here. You can see that if I now change the rotation, all of the keys are being rotated. So applying the rotation isn't an issue, and that's great. So, now we need to use the active key output as our rotation. Again, the active key can only be 1 or 0, but I personally like rotation of 6 degrees. So let's again put in a float math node and multiply this value by 6. Now to input this into our rotation, I want to use the combined Euler node and input the result into the x input. Also all of these values are in degree, so let's check use degree and input this Euler output into the rotation input. And now you can see that only one key, which is G4, is being rotated. Great, let's play the animation and you can see that everything works as expected. There's just one thing I forgot to tell you and this is that for the correct rotation you of course want your orientation to be at the very end of the key, right here. Again you can change this for all keys at the same time by selecting everything and under tool select only effect origins and now with the move tool you can move the origins. Great! And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can use a MIDI file to drive a piano animation. If you found this tutorial helpful and if you learned something, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.